Because genetics play a role, yes, but to me, it's minimal. And this leads me to answer your question. I... Oh, you know, if you had to guess. Well, first off, I want to come back on something you just said, the valuability. I think it's an important point because if you look at the difference in potential, for example, hormonal profile between two natural lifters, someone who's top, top, top production and someone who's very low in terms of potential in genetics, and you compare that with drug users, you'll find out that the variability between two naturals is minuscule. It's almost nothing. It's going to be a few grams here and there. So it doesn't make that much of a difference. And I think it's something important to point out because PD users are on grams and grams of stuff. They take doses that are three times, four times what a natural is going to produce. So they are in their own entire universe. And I think it's dangerous to look at what PD users have done to our standards and then equate that to genetics as if it was the same thing. Because does genetics play a role? Yes, but to me, it's minimal. And this leads me to answer your question. I don't consider myself to be someone with good genetics. When I see the amount of time I had to put in and the way I evolved, where I just gained a few pounds here and there throughout the years from 110 to 210, I personally cannot look at someone else and think, yeah, you can't do that. It's not possible because for me, anyone who trains 13 years is going to have a physique as good, if not better than mine. So it's a situation where I would tell you that I think I have personally below average genetics, but that if you looked at me now, you would think I have very good genetics because I actually worked my ass off. And that's what I call Schrodinger's genetics. It's impossible to decide or to detect your level of genetics before you've put in enough work. And by that time, you'll be big. So technically, you'll have good genetics, which means that the vast majority of people willing to put in the work have good genetics. To a good discussion because that's definitely a point we disagree on. So I'll I'll touch on both of those points. So as far as the steroids versus genetics, this is something I was talking with Abel Chabayi and uh, Brandon Cruz on like probably a year ago now. We said, okay, so you could basically take as much steroids as you wanted, but there's somehow no health side effects. Like it's just the benefits, or and, and like you have like dead average genetics. Or you can have like pristine top of the top level genetics, but be natural. And all of us agreed genetics by a long shot. When you look at guys like a Doug Miller and a Lane Norton who compete closer to 200 pounds, completely shredded. And then you look at a guy like Brad Loomis, who's been training with top people. I mean, top coaches for 25 years, and he competes at similar height at 155. You're talking a 40 pound difference in lean body mass on stage. We have many examples. Now, again, can you ever know somebody is completely natural? No, but we have people who have passed test after test after test who are extremely impressive and people who I know and many people know who have used gear who really don't look that good. And if you, if you do not have the genetics to respond to gear, so we, we can talk about how amazing gear is. Well, Ronnie Coleman, he's probably a hundred pounds bigger than any natural could be, but he had the genetic response to gear. There are many people who go on gear who look like absolute trash, you know, to, to be blunt. Um, and they do not have the response to touch on the hormone variability. Sure. You know, most natural lifters are going to have somewhere between 300 and 900 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone, but testosterone is one of many, many factors that relate to one's genetic potential and, and in no way would make up the difference that we see in terms of muscle fibers, in terms of androgen receptor density, in terms of myostatin, uh, mTOR activation. I mean, there's so many things that lead to genetics. So uh, that might just be a point we disagree on, but I think genetic variability is quite huge as it is with many other human variables. So for the first point, I don't know the second person you cited. You tell me that they're six feet and one fifty. They compete in bodybuilding. Brad Loomis is not six feet. He's five nine. Okay. And he competes at about one fifty five. And then there are other like the top top naturals, five nine. You could be. I mean, there are guys who are competing at like one ninety. So you're talking about a thirty five pound difference in lean body mass. And we're talking about someone who's natural. Correct. All right. So I would say here that it might also be a personal choice. It might not necessarily be that he can't gain any more weight. He might just want to stay at that level to be shredded, 
to the to the socks. It's possible. Now it leads to a completely different set of, of interrogations as whether or not a natural should actually want to be shredded. In my opinion, if you follow the standards of pro bodybuilding and you're natural, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you might be leaving a ton of mass on the table. If I wanted to be lean, 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 I might have to be 170. That's 40 pounds of, of mass. Do I want to lose that 40 pounds of mass just to be slightly more lean? I think it's a waste in, in a sense because you're just going to be small then. But that's a different discussion. But to go back on the genetics, I do agree with something that you said is that one, you have to look at other factors than just hormonal profile. I use the hormonal profile because when people talk about PDs, it's all they look at because PDUs only does that. It only has an influence on your hormonal profile. So that was for the people who are obsessed with tests and who always say, well, I have poor test production. Okay, but don't correlate that with PDUs. PDUs would like quadruple your test level. So the difference between you and a top natural is not as big as you would think. And then it's the rest, right? We all know the tale of the guy who took drugs and he looks like garbage. Why? Well, because your hormonal profile is only one thing. After that, it has an influence on the way you look, on the, the, the insertion of the muscle, the quality of the fibers, as you said, etc. That cannot change just via PDUs. But I would say that if you take the same individual and you clone them, and you put one on PED and the other on nothing, just natural, the one on PED is of course going to blow up and is of course going to make better results. It's not something that you can argue with. And this leads to the problem with genetics, in my opinion, is that the field of genetics hinges on the idea that you're going to compare yourself with others. But this is already a problem in itself because what is the point? You're training for yourself by yourself. You don't need to compare yourself. So you are you and you have the genetics you are gifted. That's what you have to work with. Even if someone is much better than you, it doesn't matter. Now it's a question of whether or not the PDUs in this individual would make the difference. And as we already said, yes, it would. So I agree that there are people who are going to have better genetics altogether. But if we look again at your example of, do you want pristine genetics and natural, or do you want normal genetics and PDUs as much as you want with no consequences? The issue is that you're looking at two different people. They're not the same guy. And that's my issue. Sure. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's just a theoretical argument. You could never really have that scenario, but when I've seen people who, you know, you know, as far as one could know somebody is natural, I, I mean, it's, it's not even just a muscle growth thing. I mean, levels of strength, the ability at sport, there's, there's such a huge variation. I mean, obviously height, right. I mean, you, obviously it's not as modifiable as, as muscle growth, but I, I personally think there's, there's wide, uh, a wide array of differences when it comes to genetics. And, um, like I said, I, I can think of even like a couple of friends who I know took gear and we had, there's like one guy in our group who was just like a natural athlete. I mean, just like, you know, he was top level baseball player squatted four or five for six at like 20 years old. Some people could just never, ever achieve that. Right. I, I mean, you know, depending on it, if they're like really bottom of the barrel genetics. So, um, but, but to your point, you're never going to know these things unless you try it. One point, I guess I would bring up when you said you're comparing yourself to other people and why that could matter 